What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about transparency in gaming. That's right. We see a really good trend in the industry to have transparency in game development and game development cycles. And a couple of games to point out that brought this to my attention are Ashes of Creation, of course, because they've, they've been in development for a while, but they have developer updates. These developer updates are great for the community. They are great to keep you know, motivation going for people to keep interest in the game. We see it from a game called Providence, which you'll see in a second. We see it actually surprisingly from Diablo. Now, if you don't know or haven't really kept up with Diablo, Diablo 4 has been one of the most transparent games that I've seen from a triple A developer like Activision. Diablo 4 has been really transparent from day one. We have campfire chats. We have, you know, thought processes and two you know, the way the games are developed, the system design. We have multiple different developers showing up in these campfire chats, at, you know, answering questions from Twitch, from chat. And it's great. And then now we have the betas coming out with the Diablo 4. That's another good thing. Another game that has really, you know, emphasized this is actually Dead Drop. Now, if you don't know, Dead Drop was going to be a uh, game, you know, that Dr. Disrespect was involved in, aside from all that controversy, Dead Drop had vertical slices. Dead Drop had, you know, events with Optic and all kinds of other things that were going on with Dead Drop that gave transparency to the game. And we can see here, they, they, they talk to us about their, the way they're thinking about level design. They're talking to us about the way they do things. They have founders editions and founders tests. Now, it does have some scrutiny with the, um, you know, the NFTs and things like that, but... It was a, a unique and clever way for them to generate revenue to keep the funding going. And, you know, it worked for the most part because we see here, this doesn't even have textures or anything, but they created this these vertical slices and, and people can actually play the game. Founders were able to get in the game, test it out, test out the mechanics, test out the guns before they were actually available. This is a good, this is a good way to go in the industry. What do you all think about it? I think it's a good way to go. And I think the success or the continued interest in these games is proof that more developers need to do that. Another good one, I say, you know, like I said, it comes from Providence and Providence is being developed by Dynasty Studios. And I believe they are, you know, an indie studio from what I gather. And you can see here we have development diaries. Again, this is like the campfire chats. We're having development, you know, diaries. And you can see our head of the studio, the head of the studio and CIO Juan Ortega shares why gamers first, second to none is at the core of everything we do. Watch now and tell us what you think. So this is a good way to get feedback. This is a good way to get involved with the community. And it goes to show you, not everything is doom and gloom. With the gaming industry, we have a lot of good trends in gaming. The, the way that, uh, you know, the pricing models are questionable. The microtransactions are questionable. But... The developer directs are good. The vertical slices are good. The, the diaries, the campfire chats, all of that stuff is good. And Diablo by far knocks it out of the park. We go in depth with everything. Their latest, uh, they go in depth with the artwork. Their latest campfire chat went in depth with all of the mechanics, all of the systems. We saw this with COD as well because COD had developer directs. Now, should more games have this in there? Should more games incorporate this transparency into them? Absolutely, because a lot of games needed this. Let's talk about what games could have benefited from this. Starfield. Starfield's good now. I like it, but Starfield could have benefited from this. Star Wars Outlaws could have benefited from this. What are some other really bad launches? Concord. That's another big one. Concord could have benefited from this, right? They could have let people play test vertical, sli vertical slices and things like that. Although that's not really common for PlayStation to do. That was another game that could have been saved. That game could have been saved. Starfield would have been better at launch. We could have had a, uh, we could have had Star Wars Outlaws would have been a way better game, right? So we see this in a lot of different things. Now, a lot of these problems that these games are having could have been avoided if they had play testing if they had open development cycles, if they could get feedback from the fans. Now, if you're in business and, and you, uh, you have any kind of professional career, 
or you understand you've been in, you know, you've been in the world, you've worked a lot of places, you understand how important feedback is. Feedback is critical to your success in your career or whatever you are doing. And the fact that these studios take take in uh, feedback, take in criticisms, they especially as the creation, you know, Starfield didn't do it. Diablo 4 did. You know, Dead Drop is doing it. Star Wars Outlaws didn't do it. Now, what Ashes of Creation did, they, they accepted feedback. They wanted feedback. Diablo 4 accepted feedback. They wanted feedback. Dead Drop accepted feedback. They wanted feedback. Providence is accepting feedback. They're wanting feedback. They're even asking you. When you have direct access to the head of the studio, that is great. We have a good trend starting. Let me know what games I missed. Let me know what games that you like that have developer access that want feedback from gamers. To me, since I'm a Diablo 4 player, the way they are doing campfire chats is great. I love it. That's one of the best things about this game. And we see that with Loot Reborn. We see that with Diablo 2.0, basically. With the expansion, we're getting 2.0. And that's because of the feedback. That's because it's open. That's because they started doing the beta test. More games need to do this. More games would be saved. And these studios, these big studios like Ubisoft would save a lot of money and it would build up the community. They would build back their brand equity and reputation if they let people do these vertical slices, if they were open about their development and did not try to cram, you know, some DEI stuff or try to hit some kind of internal metrics. That doesn't work. Another studio that could have benefited from this before we go BioWare. BioWare could have really benefited from this kind of development. And I can't even remember what that game was, that bomb. That's how bad it is. I can't even remember that game, but it probably could have been saved. It probably could have been saved that they had an open development. So all developers, they need to do this. They need to start. They need to continue with this trend of having diaries, campfire chats, seasonal updates, vertical slices, all of that good stuff. Props to these game developers for doing that, and especially props to Activision Blizzard for doing that with Diablo, because that is the biggest game that is doing this. And if they are doing it, it is going to set a really good trend because it is working out for them really well. And if a billion dollar corporation, well, obviously there was Microsoft now, can set a good precedent like this, that is good for gaming, that is good for everyone. It is not all doom and gloom.